Good morning. Richard L. Henderson is a native of Albany, Georgia, and is the son of Richard A. and Jeanette Henderson. He attended the Doherty County School System, where he graduated from Westover High School, the class of 1995. Henderson attended Albany Technical College and majored in Computer Information Systems. He graduated from Albany Tech in 2001. He continued his education at Albany State University and studied criminal justice. He worked for several years as an officer with the Albany Police Department and worked his way up to evidence manager in the forensic unit. While at Albany Tech, Henderson was active and engaged in campus life and community service. He was a member of the Student Government Association and Phi Beta Lambda, where he served as the historian of PBL. He was selected to who's who among students in American universities and colleges. Henderson is an entrepreneur who owns two businesses in Albany. He owns JR's Loving Care Services Incorporated and has owned Henderson Lawn Service for the past 21 years. Henderson was inspired to open JR's Loving Care Services Incorporated because of his experience with his father's illness. His father had a stroke in 1995, the year that he graduated from high school. When Henderson decided to make a career change, he remembered how hard it had been for him to help his mother care for his dad. So he did some research. With his mother's coaching, he put his plan together, and today he is a successful business owner. For the past 12 years, JR's Loving Care has provided home care service for clients in their homes to supplement the care provided by family members. The business also transports clients to and from doctor's appointments and provides skilled nursing services. Henderson is a member of the Leesburg Church of Christ in Leesburg, Georgia. He mentors youth through his volunteer work and coaching with the City of Albany Recreation Department and the Albany YMCA. Henderson and his wife, Monica, have been married for 15 years. They have three beautiful children, Javon, Cameron, and Kelsey. Without further ado, please help me welcome the speaker for the morning, Mr. Richard L. Henderson. Thank you. I would like to first of all thank everyone um, for supporting me on this and inviting me, giving me the opportunity to come in and speak to everyone. And uh, I'm, I'm very elated to know that a Westover is bringing a Westovian back up, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, young lady. Did a very good job. Uh, Vincent, I think she represents us quite well, right? And my other colleagues that went to Westover. Um, as they say, I, I went to Albany Tech here years ago, and this is a growing place, and, and these, uh, I'm a part of it as well because I came through in 2001, and they came through in, uh, you know, in 2017. It has grown a whole lot to the point where they are needed in this community to make the difference in our world and our society today. And anytime I have an opportunity to go and speak to young people to try to keep them on the right track or to encourage them to go further, I really try my best to make that happen. So when Ms. Richardson called me and told me about this, I, I looked at my calendar and there was a couple of things on there, so I was able to shift it around and I made it happen for, um, for you all. And I, I really am grateful for the opportunity and everything, but um, the main thing why I'm doing this is because I really care about these kids. I do a lot of mentoring uh, with the YMCA and the City of Albany, uh, uh, the baseball rec department, 8th Avenue, and, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, it is truly needed. It is truly needed, and so when I can see these kids are on the right track and they are trying to go, I'm going to see if I can give them a little bit more push with you all support as well um, with this. And I see a couple of people out here that I went to school with here at Albany Tech, and I see Ken Singleton there um, as well. I used to work with him, and just so you know, when I worked at Albany uh, Police Department, I started out part-time with their cadet service that they had, cadet program, where they would work with you with your school schedule, as well as uh, work there part-time to enter in uh, pawn tickets. So, said all that to say this, I was, uh, I pretty much learned to take small steps. And that's what young people, um, you all need to do is take small steps. So the biggest step you have taken so far is by graduating from high school and now you're graduating from Albany Tech. 
So you got your foundation. It's like building a house. You got your foundation. If you don't have a good foundation, your house is going to fall. Okay? So you all got a really good foundation. You just build from there. Okay? And what I want to encourage you all to do, um, continue your education if that's what you want to do, because education and knowledge and communication is the key. If you can simply do that, I promise you, the job that you will, that comes in front of you, you'll be able to go and you'll be able to take it head first and you'll be able to just explore and, and uh, explode and, and just make a tremendous difference in that particular office or job or uh, maybe even your own job um, in business that you may in entitle, okay? What you need to uh, make sure that you also do is you have to keep God first, okay? You keep God first and, and things will continue to balance right on out. And the main thing that you all need to do is understand that you are young, and so you need to make smart decisions with your, with your future. Don't do anything crazy. I know you're young, and uh, I, I know the world look at you as, as if you're young, dumb, and crazy, but don't pay that any attention, okay? You are young, you're smart, you're energetic, and you are very, very, very important to the society. And whatever you do, do things in, in, in uh, small increments and in small steps to the point where you can go and kind of grow from that, okay? And as you grow from that, you, you take your steps according to, to your pace. Do not try to go too fast. Do not try to go too, too slow. Go at your pace. Nobody knows your situation better than you do. And I said all that to say this, with my situation with my, uh, with my father, when he had his stroke uh, the year I graduated from high school, I was young and I was energetic, wanted to do this, wanted to do that and everything, but when my dad had his stroke, I had to really sit down and look at myself and, and I had to take the young boy's shoes off and put on, put on grown men's shoes instantly because my mom, she had broken down and she told me straight up, she said, look, I don't have time to be trying to worry about you doing in and everything, uh, in and out of jail or anything like that or whatever she said because your dad, he's sick and we don't know how this is gonna turn out. So, of course, me and her, we got together, we prayed and I put on the grown man's shoes and I've been going ever since, okay? And uh, at that particular time, I was working with the Albany Police Department and uh, they was able to work with me with my, uh, with my education, of course, and as well as his uh, his situation on uh, doctor's appointments and therapy and stuff like that. So me and my mom, we worked hand in hand, and my mom, she works with the housing authority, so she, at that particular time, she was the one that was able to, um, had the most to lose at that time. So I had to make some smarter decisions as a young man, okay? And so she made sure I stayed in my education. She made sure that because she knew once he got over his hump that still I had to have what? An education. So I stayed with my education with my mom's coaching on that and we saw the need of, of, a, of the service that I do now which is, um, excuse me, the service that I do which is pretty much the last resort that you have uh, before your family member can go into the nursing home. And the studies show, of course, that people do better at home than uh, in the nursing home. They last longer, they do better, they progress better and everything. So we saw the need for that because we couldn't hardly get anyone to come out and um, service him, uh, be with him and take care of him and everything like we would. So when he got up to the point where he could uh, pretty much take care of himself, we ended up doing what? We ended up looking into it and we, we researched it, did all the ins and outs, and then we started very small, small steps, small bikes, okay? And we, we grew from there. And now I'm a successful business owner where I have 125 clients and I serve 28 counties. Matter of fact, as soon as I leave here, I've got to go to Bainbridge, sign up a new client. So we wanna, I'm going to get Ms. Richardson because I was supposed to be there. <laughs> but it's people like Ms. Richardson years ago that I had... Um, I had the push. Now, Miss Richardson years ago was a very hard pusher, and I could not do what she asked me to do. But I had to learn in the hard way, which was typing. We had we had to type. I think it was 20 words a minute with very limited amount of mistakes. That's what you had to do to get out of that course. And my fingers are, are really big, and I was not very good at typing. And and Miss Richardson, she has some very tough love. But I learned the hard way. But I appreciate she, excuse me, I appreciate her for that. And now to this day, I use some of her tactics in my office. Okay. And also, <clears throat> also the, the main thing that uh, young people have to realize is 
You have your whole future ahead of you with education, with your uh, inspiration, and with your knowledge, and also with your expertise, because I'm sure every last one of you all are, are good at something, okay? And that, that leads me to say this. Um, I always tell young people to have three plans. Plan A, plan B, and plan C. A is what you love to do. You can find that, whatever you love to do, and find a job doing that, guess what? You'll wake up every day and you'll, you'll probably never want to quit that job. That's what you love to do, all right? Plan B is something that you, you like doing, but it ain't what you love to do, but you, enjoy, you still enjoy doing it, okay? If you can find something like that to maybe work toward plan A, you'd be good. And then plan C is something that you have got to, to go and, and make some money with. You really don't like it, but you can deal with it until you can find something that's gonna fit your A or B uh, need or A or B want, okay? All right, now, said all that to say this. You need to get one, two, or three so you can get out your mom and daddy pocket, okay? <laughs> Trust me, I know, all right? And that also leads, leads me to say this as well. I, my dad taught me how to cut grass years ago. I was cutting grass back when I was in school and everything um, on the weekends and afternoons and, and, um, and everything from Westover High School. And uh, I just, when my dad had his stroke, he had about, I wanna say 17 or 18 clients that he had, uh, he was servicing. And so when that happened, my mom said, that'll be your little money that you can have on the side or whatever. And come to find out, I end up having to, to make ends meet. I had to end up still doing those same yards to just make ends meet. So I had to really step up into some big man shoes very quickly. So I ended up cutting grass. I ended up going to school, working at the police department. So I've always had more than one thing to do, okay? And so with that being said, you can do the same thing because you, you have, uh, your minds and everything are, are so smart and so quick and so, um, how I wanna put it, your minds are, are very, very energetic, okay? And, and with, with that being said, you don't have to have all your eggs in one basket as, as some of the older, your grandparents would tell you, older people would say. You can have, have them in two, two or three different baskets just as long as there's this income because income is the key with you all, okay? And the parents that, that have supported you uh, in these situations, they know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? And if you can find those, that plan A, plan B, or plan C, and make it work, hey, you'll be successful. I promise you that. What you all also have to remember too is, remember your family. Remember your family, they have always been there with you, they, have, they always will be there with you, and continue to help them, and do not forget about them, okay? And also, Keep in mind, keep in mind that um, this day and time, technology is out there. I know young people love the, the social media and everything, nothing wrong with social media. Just be careful what you do with social media. Use it for your, your best advantage, and also continue to, and I encourage you to continue on with your education, whether it be here, whether it be Albany State, or wherever you, you wanna go, but you, you need to really be educated today so that you can be knowledgeable about the job that you need to do, you need to be knowledgeable uh, about the, the things that you're gonna entitle. The more education you have, the better it's gonna be. Communication, communication is the key. A lot of young people don't like to talk too much on the phone, like, like to talk too much face to face from what I've seen in the past. Well, that's, that may be an issue with, uh, with you having an interview. So make sure you're able to communicate and sell yourself to that person that you're gonna um, have an interview with uh, to get a job because you can have a lot of stuff on paper, but if you can't you can't communicate and interact with uh, everyone, you, you're going to have a have an issue on uh, trying to hold that job. Okay, I'm, I'm old school in my office. When you come in to um, to put an application with us with Gerald's Love and Care Services, um, I'm very big on pre presentation, which is how you appear. I'm very big on um, your communication. I'm very big on um, on your um, attitude. Okay, all that would take you a little bit further than where you want to go and end up getting what you want in the end, okay? So make sure that you, that you all keep that in mind because I, a lot of people, um, they don't understand, but presentation is, is a, uh, your first impression is the lasting impression, okay? Uh, if you don't, don't appear to be like you, you're, uh, you're wanting to, to want this position and uh, excel in this particular job, well, you, you may, may stand a chance where you may not get the job. And if you can't talk about it, it it's really gonna be ugly. It's really going, it's, it's not professional. And also, your attitude, your attitude will spill over into the customer service part of the job. Most jobs have to have good customer service skills, okay? And you guys, young, 
I've seen some very good young people with very good customer service skills that would just blow your mind. And I, me being a business owner in those situations, but it be at a restaurant or wherever, I, I've always encouraged them to continue to do that. So that lets me know that, you know, um, that job is, is really caring, or that office or that uh, business is really caring enough to implement that and, uh, and put that into these, these kids, uh, young people and everything. Now, why is that important? That's important because when people have choices uh, outside of where you at, then that's a problem because if, if you don't have um, if you don't have people coming in and spending the money and um, and everything, then you may not have a job. That's that's the trend of it and everything. Yes, it's important because if you don't have the income, no job, then you are back to square one again. What you're going to do? Okay. So, with me being a business owner from the uh, lawn care side as well as the, the uh, home care side. And with my, the experience and everything that I have, um, I've, I've been in business now uh, 13, 14 years on the JR side and 21 years with the lawn care side. It, it's an it's a ongoing trying thing. So don't get comfortable with something and think that's gonna be it forever, okay? Do not get comfortable with that and parents, uh, as well, do not get comfortable with them uh, just just being lollygagging or whatever. If you think they need to do something, push them again. Push them back into the, the classroom. Push them back into the uh, education part and say, "Hey, uh, you can you can excel yourself a little bit better." And if that's if, if you know your child, I'm sure you do. Everybody, every parent knows their child better than anyone else. If if you can push them into the classroom to get something else better, hey, do it, do it, but at your expense. At your expense, not mamas and daddies, okay? <laughs> All right? So, when you see that, um, when, you, when you see yourself getting complacent and comfortable, you just need to make sure that you are, that's where you want to be because as soon as you get complacent and comfortable, that's probably where you want to stay. But I would encourage you to continue to, your education, and encourage you to continue to uh, go as far as you can go uh, as long as you can, because once you get complacent and get comfortable, things are starting to to uh, to be to be stopped. I'm just gonna be honest with you, okay? And once you get to that point, you you don't wanna you don't wanna be stopped uh, unless you absolutely have to, because when you when you get stopped to a point, your, your opportunities and everything changes and everything starts to be on the downhill. You always wanna be on the uphill, okay? So keep your minds open. Keep your minds. Um, Keep your minds open, keep your minds um, very acceptable to new changes, new things, new attitudes and stuff uh, for the better, then we should see you all coming back in a few years to do the same thing that I'm doing because that's the way I was. And, and with that in mind, you guys should, should uh, sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. Some, some of the stuff that you guys can, can do, if you always put your mind to it and stick to it and be, be very um, conservative with it, you'd be surprised what you can come up with. You might be the next billionaire or millionaire in this world, in Albany. Then again, you may want to move. Whatever that is that you want to do, uh, you, you can do it. Just put your mind to it, stick to it, and be, be consistent, and you should be okay. All right? And those are the words that I have for you to take out starting today or when you get your degree and everything. I think you all graduate uh, Thursday. You all graduate Thursday, and I wish you the best. And if I can be of any help or encouragement, you can come see me at 1128 Dawson Road. I'll be there most of the time. Thank you.